We'll continue our exploration of the ANOVA technique by doing a full example. Say you are looking to grow strawberries over the summer, and you want to select the variety that will give you on average the most berries per plant. Here are the results for three different varieties. Given that these are all in the same price range, you want to know if there is a significant difference in the number of berries these plants can give you. The first step, of course, is to choose the test. Here we are looking for the difference between means. We assume the distributions are equal, and we have an independent qualitative variable with three values, the varieties of strawberries, which are A, B, and C. And we have a dependent quantitative variables, the amount of strawberries these plants can give you. These are the necessary conditions to do an ANOVA test. We can now state our statistical hypotheses. These are rather simple for the ANOVA technique. The null hypothesis indicates that all means are equal. You can either write it mathematically or state it with words. The alternative hypothesis says that at least one mean is different. You cannot write this because it is possible that two of the means can actually be equal and only one being different. No surprise for step 3, because nothing else was mentioned, we will use a level of significance of 0.05. Step 4 is to find the critical value. You might recall that finding F values calls for two different degrees of freedom. This is still true when doing the ANOVA technique. Let's start with the degree of freedom of the numerator. Remember that this is the variance of the sample means to the great means. So we must first ask ourselves, how many samples do we have? The degree of freedom for the numerator is the number of samples minus 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. The degree of freedom of the denominator refers to the within group variance. Remember that this is the variance of all of the values in all of the samples with respect to the great mean. So we must first ask ourselves, how many values are contained in all of our samples? The degree of freedom for the denominator is the number of values in all of the samples minus the number of samples. So because we have three samples with 10 values each, in total we have 30 values minus 3, our number of samples. Our degree of freedom is 27. We can now go into the F table to find the critical value. The ANOVA technique is considered a right-tailed test. Yes, even if the alternative hypothesis seems to reflect a two-tailed test. We can choose the F table with our significance level, so 0.05. Our degree of freedom for the numerator is 2. Our degree of freedom for the denominator is 27. So our critical value is of 3.35. To sketch this, make sure you draw the shape of the F distribution, which is skewed positively, and indicate not only the area of rejection, but also the critical value. We are now ready to calculate our actual F value. Let's start with the numerator, the between group variable. Here is the equation for this. First, we have the mean of a given sample to which we subtract the great mean. A little parentheses on how to calculate the great mean. If you have all of the values, add them up and divide the result by the number of values you have. If you only have the sample means, you can add those up and then divide the result by the number of samples. Back to our numerator equation. Once you have subtracted the great mean from the sample mean, square the result multiplied the squared result by that samples n. Repeat this for all of the sample means and then add those results together. In our example, we would have three results to add. Once you have the sum, divide it by the number of samples minus one. Let's calculate our between sample variance for our example. We'll first calculate the great mean. We don't have all of the values, so we will add up the sum of our sample means and divide it by 3, our number of our samples, which will give us a great mean of 27.17. The equation states that you must 
subtract the great mean from each of the sample means, square the result and multiply that by n, and then add all of those together. So written completely out, this is what you have. So you have 24.2 minus 27.17 squared multiplied by 10, that's for your first mean, and then 27.1, your mean of your second sample, minus 27.17 squared multiplied by 10, do the same thing for variety 3, add those up, and divide it by 2. So simplified just a little bit, this is what you get. Simplified further, this is what you get. And ending up even more simplified to 180.049 divided by 2, which will give you a between sample variance of 90.03. We can finally calculate our denominator, the within-group variance. Here is the equation. We have the variance of a given sample, which we multiply by that same sample's n minus 1. Repeat that for as many samples as you have, and then add all of those results together. This will be divided by the sum of the sample n's minus 1. To obtain that value, subtract 1 from every sample n and add them together. Let's do it with our value. So here is the equation. Now our first variety has an n of 10, so 10 minus 1 times the variance of the sample, 21.54. Add to that the same thing but for the values of variety 2, and you will add to that the same thing but with the values for variety 3. All three of our samples have an n of 10, so we add 10 minus 1 plus 10 minus 1 plus 10 minus 1 for our denominator. Now to, we simplify this just a little bit to make it easier, and a little bit more, and a little bit more to give us a within sample variance of 19.31. There, we finally have all we need to find our f value. By dividing 19.03 by 19.31, we obtain a value of 4.67. Now there's a lot of things to remember, so you can also use what is called an ANOVA summary table. This is what most computer programs will actually print out. The first column gives you the sum of squares, which, if you remember, are the numerators when you're calculating a variance. The second column gives you the degree of freedom. Notice that by adding the values, you get the totals, so the bottom row. If you divide the first column by the second one, you obtain what are called the mean squares. Dividing the top mean square by the second mean square gives you your actual f. So if you have a sufficient amount of information, it's possible you won't have to do the whole calculations. We can move forward to the statistical decision. So remember our calculated f value was of 4.67, and our critical value is of 3.35. Now because our calculated value is higher than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. This lets us state that at least one of the varieties of strawberries does not, in average, give the same amount of fruit. This shows one of the limits of the ANOVA technique. It only identifies if at least one of the means is different. It does not tell us how many are different or which one is actually different. We'll see this in the next video.